Hi, James here from Siege Stoves, and I'm going to show you how we can prepare a can really quickly using the Siege Stove cross members. You get a set of four either in stainless steel or titanium, which is half the weight. And uh, we've been giving a little P38 can openers, which as long as we have them in stock, we'll give those with them. And essentially these cross members form this set of four. So you get two for the top and they just interlock like this and two for the bottom. And this set happens to be stainless steel. And so here we have a can, of course, could be any size can all the way up to um, number 10 paint cans and and uh, so forth. We're just going to use this one here. So I'm going to start by taking the label off this can and uh, maybe the fangs will help me here. Let's see if that works. I'm going getting up against the glue here. All right. So imagine you have a can of food and you have nothing but a set of cross members. You can open it with your little P38, hooks in there, just in that little notch there, and you've got your leverage. So you work your way around the can like this until it's open. And then you take the lid off and then you get, a, uh, get your pot or pan or whatever it is, empty your food in there, and then that's what you're going to cook in, and then this becomes your can. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make some holes in the can. It helps to have someone hold hold the uh, the can, but another way to do it is to just get a stick. could be something as thick as this or something thinner. I'm not going to go all the way in because this stick is a little too thick. And then I'm going to get my cross member. Now, if I was doing this on the ground, I could put my foot on there. In this case, I'm going to have someone help me. It always helps to have someone else holding it for you. And so you get this particular cross member. These two fangs are sharpened on the tips. And if you turn it, you can kind of see a little bit of a glint there. And so I'm going to go around all the way around the can like this. So tap and twist. And you can go up like this. Let's time this one here. We're gonna time it. All right, so I'm gonna get that started. Okay, here we go. So, so we go tap, tap, twist. Another one, tap, twist. Probably have to get that stick out a little bit more maybe, or maybe not. Okay, and we're gonna turn it. We're gonna do the next one here. And you can often do with one tap there. And especially with a with a bigger can, go up about uh, maybe a little more than halfway, maybe two thirds of the way, and you take any old stick, and let's go here. Yeah, all right. I had the stick in the way. That's why it was a little bit slow. Yeah. There we go. So for survival, you can get this ready in about two minutes and here we are and you can make as many holes as you like really what I've got here should be enough and and there we go hold that for me and here we go so I got delayed a little bit. Camera started to fall over. And one last set here. Okay, now take this out. We've got one more feature. Oh yeah, we're gonna add a few holes in the bottom. That's always important as well, just because 
that adds to the airflow. So you want to have good airflow underneath. And I'm going to just make a bunch of holes here. And maybe another one there. And you can go around the edges as well. And so forth. So now we've got a can prepared. Our timer has turned blank there. All right, so about two minutes. And now we're ready to attach the cross members. Now, before we do that, I'm going to show you one more thing we can add to this as, a, as an option, and that are our side toasters. You get them in a pair, so you two, two for one side, two for the other side. And so what we want to do here, take our can, now with a bigger can, this will be work a little bit better because this um, the outer fangs, the outer prongs here aren't really going to go in. But basically, you've got your marker pen, and you just mark here anywhere around the can, just approximately where you want to do this, just on the edge. And then for a bigger can, you would also mark out here where these prongs go. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. And I'm going to mark it. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to mark other holes here. And then put that together. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our fangs. And where did I mark it? Okay, there. So I'm going to do this now. And I'm going to make that hole a little bit wider and, and let's check that out and there it's almost wide enough we can make it a little bit wider and now I can tap that in there we go and I can put my toaster right in there and so i'm going to show you this on another bigger can as well but just so you see let's take this off for the moment we're going to finish up this this one here and my slots there so i'm going to make it so that this the slots are there in between these or they could actually be right in the middle but it's a little harder to do so i think this will work well and then you tap this in And we got the bottom bottom cross members on. And then we get the top cross members here, and we snap them on here. Now, this particular can is the smallest one that will fit, and it's not ideal because it's got limited capacity, but it'll work for survival. So preferably, you'd want to have a bigger can. So we toss that one and I'll show you something larger. This one here, I already made holes in it. And uh, I haven't made holes for the, um, for the toasters, but I think I have one that I have. Let's see, all right, so let's just do that right now. And I can probably just do it by eyeballing it. So I'm gonna pick a spot here. Well, let's see, I've got, I've got a ton of holes already made up. Yeah, I'll put this in so many places. So those toasters, they can either, let me just show you, they can either be balanced underneath like that, and then you'd put your bread here. But I prefer to actually make slots for them. So I'm gonna do that, and I could make them straddle the cross members, that's why there's a, a gap here. Or I can make it like this. So we can try it both ways. and. Well, in this case, maybe I'll mark it and try it right there. So let's see how that works. This one's good. And then do this and make my slots. And rock it out a little. And so 
so here we go and then I can just tap that in and I would make slots here and here as well which I didn't do but I could actually do that right now just like that and that might work and it'll be a little better if I marked it first but you can do it on the fly and let's see how that lines up so right about there there but that's not going anywhere and then I can put this on and so let's get put these cross members together and we can see if I've got that right there so I didn't line it up exact let's put that in there and then take that make that slot a little bit wider this way I think there we go Right about there. And try tapping that in. All right. So we got one toaster, and you got two two slots if you want to bring your bread a little closer in or out. And uh, we got some bread here. I'll show you. You just slide that in right like that, and. You want to generally wait for the fire to simmer down to coal so you don't burn your bread because it will toast very quickly. And then as soon as it's browned on one side, you want to flip that over. And of course, you can put the other one in the other side as well, either balanced on the cross members up to that notch there. Or you can actually up to there. Or you can, you can put bread on both sides. Actually, I didn't show that, but right like that and so this side the cross member is balanced there but it's pretty secure this is more secure though and it only takes a few seconds to make those holes so that's the way i would prefer to do it and let's take these, take these off and i'll show you the top cross members these you just press on and oops, put them together. You can turn them any way you like, doesn't matter. Just center them though. You can see which notches are on the inside and which are out. And if it's not going on all the way, you can just tap it on. This can is, there we go. And so, and I can take this out at some point. You put your pot on top and or whatever you're going to cook in you know, a little pan or or something smaller whatever you're going to cook with it'll also work with our folding grills so we've got these folding grills here and in two sizes so you swing the handle out tighten the wing nut and the other handle out let's tighten those wing nuts that one's snug this one's now snug and if you put that on there you got burgers and things or hot dogs you can put in there like a this fake burger put that in there and the nice thing about these is you can flip them over if the fire is coming up you can lift them away flip it over as much as you like so you can get really nice even cooking with this unlike a grill plate that fits on top of the stove and we have this uh, in two sizes so that's the compact and this is the large you can see there you can get a nice big nice big piece of fish or meat in that one and so that's got a little more of a utility but this is good for solo campers So these cross members now, I'm going to take them off. They might be a little tight the first time you put them on, so you just tap them off like that. And the same with the tops. Tap them off. And 
and this I'm just gonna pry it out. There we go, it came out pretty easily. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you some other cans. So as you saw, it'll work with these two cans, these cross members, and they will work all the way up to really big cans. So it's the most versatile and, and scalable stove on the planet. There's no stove that can scale like this. So we can use a whole variety of cans. This is a, a compact coffee can. This is your regular small food can. And we keep going with these. This is a, like a chili can or bean can. And you can go something taller, like some of these other more exotic ones. And then you can get into your bigger coffee cans. And just so you can see, all of these tabs are specially designed so they fit these. So I just center that there and press them on. And now it's on, really nice and secure. And then of course you tap them in the bottom. Same thing with the others. So again, center it like so. And then you can either press it on or tap it on. And you've got yourself a really nice stable pot top. And I'll keep going here with some more cans. Folgers. Uh, some of the cans these days are plastic, but there's still tons of cans that are, are metal. And so they go on really easily. And this one already made, made notches at the bottom. So you can see how that would be. Let's see, did I make them before? No, I haven't, I haven't tapped it in yet. But I'm not gonna do that right now, because you've already seen that. So we're gonna go to another can. That's a number 10 can, it's a really big can. And they have it also the same diameter in a peanut can. Let me center that there, press it in. And you can see it's got a nice secure hold to it. You got a lot of fuel in there, so you fill it up with your wood scraps and twigs and whatever you lay your hands on, it'll burn and get a really big fire going in there for a group of people. This can is the same diameter, just shorter. Peanuts, same thing. And of course, the lower cross members have the benefit of lifting your stove off the ground. And that's very important for a couple of reasons. First, you're getting airflow. Now this can hasn't got holes in it yet, but you would put a lot of holes in the sides and underneath, and then you get really good airflow because the sides of the can don't go down to the ground like with most stoves that have cutouts for air. This whole stove is lifted off the ground. So you get optimal airflow and it also helps to reduce heat going down into the ground below as well. So of course, you always want to cook on, uh, you know, put your stove on something like a rock or some, something where it's not going to burn. There's no duff underneath the ground, that kind of thing. Could use a board like I have here. So some other cans. Uh, let me just show you one type of can you don't want to use. And so again, these are, can be a little tight taking off, but just a few taps will get them off as well. And rock them out. And there we go. But that all makes for a nice secure stove. And so this can here, this is pineapple juice and it's very acidic. So what they do is they coat the inside of the can with a zinc coating. It's a galvanized coating. And so you don't want to use these cans because when they get really hot and with a fire in it, that zinc coating is going to um, vaporize and go into the air, and that's toxic to breathe. Of course, generally, you're going to be away from your fire, and the heat's going to take everything up anyway. With other cans, they might have a, a very thin coating on the inside. That's going to burn off with the first use. And so you could just get your fire going nice and hot, stand back, and let it all burn off before you cook on it. But with these, uh, just to be safe, we tell people don't use galvanized cans. But not many cans are like this. All right, so then uh, we've also got paint cans. So these same cross members 
will fit both kinds of paint cans. And you can see that this here, these notches specially designed to fit into the lip. Uh, you, you used to have to cut notches in the lips of the paint cans with our older versions. I've already done this one here, so I just line it up where I pressed it in before and tap it in. And now you can see it's right in the lip there. So you've got a really nice secure attachment. And then again, these go on the bottom. And of course, there are no holes in this stove. So that makes a really nice little stove. Looks, looks really pretty. And you can just take these off. Same with these. And I'll show you the gallon paint can. Same thing. Let's put the bottom ones on the same as before. And again, these notches. You just notch them right in by lining it up. And I'll make sure all four are lined up. And just press it on with the palm of your hand. It goes in really easily. And you didn't even have to tap it in. And then again, you can make your bottom ones. You just center them and tap them in. And now you've got a really big stove for a group of people that'll hold a lot of fuel, make a nice big fire. All of these stoves will support a, a big uh, pot because of the spread of these cross members. You've got a seven inch spread top and bottom. It makes them super stable. So with the smallest can, you wouldn't want to put something too big on it, but anything above that, um, it's no problem. So we're gonna take this off and I'll show you another thing, which is you can do two cans, one around the other. So this is acting as a windbreak on the inner can. So if you're in windy conditions or expect windy conditions, take a second can with you and you can use it as a windbreak, really effective. And of course, you've got really good airflow as well uh, underneath of air that's been baffled and slowed down. And then you can even make a wood gas stove. So here's a paint can around a number 10 can. And so what happens there is you have a gap between the two and the outer can has no holes in it. The inner can has some holes going up um, a short distance and underneath. And the air flows up through the base into the wood and also up around the edge here between the two. And as it flows, it goes up between the walls of the can. And past those holes, it comes out of the wood, goes up. And then it gets near the top and it goes back in where it's now super hot because it's been heated up between the two walls. And then it juts back in and you get a, a gasification effect, which uh, is just a little more efficient, a little cleaner burning. And then lastly, you've got these IKEA cans, which come like this. And when you attach the uh, bottom cross members, you use these four corner holes and you line those fangs up with them. The center bullet goes in that center hole right there. So you line those up and then you tap them in and they're gonna make their own notches. So I'm gonna show you that on another one right here. This one's already done. And you turn it over and you can see it's made these notches right there and right there. If I take it off, you can see the notches. It's cut little notches. You don't want to try penetrating the can itself with the fang because it's just gonna buckle the can and damage the can. But in this case, you would just line them up Tap it in until they're flush right there with the with the bottom of the can. And then the same thing, you just press the top ones on nice and firmly. And you can rip them off when you're done, or you can tap them off like that. And the same with the bottom ones, you just tap them off. Go around tapping like that until they come off. Another little thing to know about is this set is titanium. So you can do either one, titanium or stainless. You'll notice that on the bottom cross members, this, this one here 
has notches at the ends right here and here. And this is so that when you want to pick up the stove, if you pick it up by that, nothing's going to fall out. Because that's the lowest piece of the whole puzzle. Because that goes up underneath the other cross member. If you grab it by the other cross member, that one can drop out. So that's just a little tip because this it works in the dark. You can feel it in the dark and you can see it in the day. So it's tactile and visual cue. And these cans are really popular because they're really nice and sturdy stainless steel. Lots of air holes so the, the fuel will burn hot and it will burn faster than, than with a regular can. Generally, when we punch cans, like this one is pre-punched, we make fewer holes in them. So the, it'll, the wood will burn a little slower, a little longer. But wood scraps, you know, are abundant and free. And so, you know, these already use very little. So you can, these are super popular, especially in Europe, because of IKEA, of course, comes from there. Um, but also in the United States. So another thing you can do if you're at home is to use a drill to make your holes. And that way you can make nice, neat, round holes. So if I take my little can like, uh, like this one, this, this is going to make much neater holes than the ones I made. You know, if I just, just find a spot and then, there we go. It's a little harder on this can, but if I do it somewhere where I haven't. And they have made a hole, nice and round. So you're gonna have a neater result with this. So if you're doing preparing a can in advance, I would always use a tapered drill bit. But if you're out in the field, these are gonna work great. And if there are any, any little sharp bits of metal sticking out, you can rub them in. But for survival, you know, this is a fantastic way you can make a, a stove when you don't have one and all you have is a can of food. Now, of course, these cross members that you see here also work with our flat pack stove. So a set of four of these come with every flat pack stove. And this is our ultimate option here. And that stove has really nice fuel capacity, a lot of really nice features that's designed into it. It's very elegantly simple design that's very easy to assemble. All the walls are identical, so you don't have to worry about the sequence. You can put the walls together before the cross members or the cross members before the walls. And then once you've got those, you just put it all, all together and just drop the floor in before you put the top ones on. So it goes together really quick. I've put it together in as little as 22 seconds, but generally about uh, 30 to 40 seconds with a bit of practice. And the whole thing packs flat, just like this. And it's a very streamlined. So if you have limited space, this is a really super option. This one is titanium and this one is stainless steel. Uh, they're both, um, you know, equally robust. They're both basically uh, going to last you multiple lifetimes. Of course, titanium is a pricier option, but it's a beautiful metal, really very stiff and sturdy. Stainless steel is a little softer, but we're using a slightly thicker gauge for our cross members. And, uh, and that takes care of it. Both, both are really solid, rock solid. And as you can see with the stove, it's just a really stable. This here isn't exactly flat, but if I were to put it anywhere else, you can see it's just not going anywhere. I can I can really push on this, and there's no sliding of the slipping of the joints. And I can put a lot of fuel in there, and the trapezoid shape that you see here ensures that as it burns down, the fuel compacts nicely, so you don't get it like a pile up in the middle or something. So that helps to keep the heat together. And of course, these work with our same toasters. So you can get this as an option, a set of these. You can put up to four of them in there. Just slot them right in. And the same, you can put them adjacent to each other or on opposite sides. And 
there you go and there and now once you've got a little bit of weight in there as well with your fuel that's going to hold that floor down so that those don't those aren't going anywhere all right so there you have the siege flat pack stove the ultimate option and a lot of people get this with an extra set of the cross members and that way they can get a fire going in this you know assemble it very very quickly get the fire started while that's burning and cooking they can take their second set of cross members and turn whatever can they had just used up and they emptied into the pot turn that into a second stove and now you've got two stoves you can cook it concurrently two meals or you can be boiling water on one while you're cooking something on the other let's say you want coffee or just a different course so that's a really nice option to have and all you need is another set of these low-cost cross members everything's made here in the united states precision laser cut we use u.s produced stainless steel and titanium and we make everything to last generations so we appreciate your support and help us by spreading the word tell your friends your online contacts about the siege stove we have thousands of users all around the world who've put them through their paces in just about every environment you can think of taking them up the himalayas and across deserts and and so forth and they know they can depend on their siege stove to always function for them and never break down there's no no hinges that can warp under heat making it impossible to open the stove or close it and there's no gas that can run out or other things that can go wrong all you need is to have a source of fuel some wood scraps and and a way to start a fire something like a a fire steel is always good to have on hand but you generally want to have multiple methods of starting fires to be secure and i think that covers the bases pretty well so i appreciate you watching and and you can visit us at siegestoves.com to see more of what we have all right thanks for watching bye